Hi everyone, so today I'm going to talk about a field monitor and why I think you might want to add this to your camera bag. Fieldworld sent this monitor out to me to review and you know I'm really glad they did because this has been on my Amazon wish list for months and months but I, I've never pulled a trigger on it because I felt like you know when I'm out vlogging and things the field monitor would add kind of some unnecessary bulk and weight to it. I said, well, I don't want to buy something if I'm really not going to use it that much, e even if, you know, it, it would be kind of handy. But now that I have it in my hands, I, I was, I really, actually, I take this with me all the time now uh, because it's really, it's really nice and thin, so it makes it easy to put in my bag, first of all, right? Uh, and then this only weighs 300 grams. It, it doesn't really add that much weight to the overall setup at all. Uh, especially when I'm out using and I think any weight or bulkiness that it adds is far outweighed by the benefits of having a screen that you can look at, a larger screen. Because even cameras that have the fully articulated screen, I think this is still a worthwhile investment, but uh, even more so in particular for like the EM10 Mark II or Mark III. Uh, and, and I've been using this a lot lately on my TG5 as well. So I'll show you a couple of examples of that. But let me just run through a couple of uh, key specs of about this monitor. Now, you know, it's a five inch screen with a full HD 1920 by 1080 display. It's an IPS technology with 440 nit brightness. So just as a comparison, most mid-range cell phones uh, have IPS displays at about four or 500 nits of brightness. So, you know, if you have a cell phone and you turn up to max brightness, you can pretty much see that in the daytime. So it's plenty bright. Uh, and then, you know, the color and the clarity is it's calibrated from the factory uh, to have accurate colors. But being an IPS display means that, you know, you have really good viewing angles as well. And then it also has some really nice features built in uh, that you don't normally find in like, you know, this price range, right? This is about 160 bucks. But the, the main one being the false colors, it also has zebras, focus peaking and digital zoom. Now, in terms of uh, usability, you know, you basically it has an HDMI in and out, so you can daisy chain these to a video recorder separately if you want. It also has a little power jack supply if you want to power this thing through AC power. Uh, and then it has two dedicated function buttons that you can program to do anything you want that this monitor is capable of. It comes with this bracket, and it comes with a hood, and it comes with the uh, HDMI cable. Uh, so. I'm going to talk about a couple of other accessories I think you should get with this camera or this uh, this monitor. Now, on the back here, uh, you can use two different kinds of batteries: a Canon LE6 or the uh, Sony NPF batteries. And I like to use the Canon LE6 batteries because they're very small and lightweight, and I get almost two hours out of this battery uh, for in the field. And and honestly. You know, I will change the battery in my camera before I have to change the battery on this monitor when I'm actually out using it. So it lasts long enough with just this very small lightweight battery. And that's that's how I travel, you know, lightweight and uh, small. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's got uh, one other thing. Well, two other things, right? It has this DC out. So if you have a dummy battery uh, for AC power, uh, this has a DC out of 8.4 volts, so you can run, you know, your AC power into the monitor and then an 8.4 volt dummy battery out to your camera so you can run both. If you're doing these long time-lapse things or really long videos, it's not something I really use, but I just thought I'd mention it. It also has a headphone jack, so if you want to listen to your audio uh, levels and, and see the quality of the sound, you can do that as well. Uh, assuming your HDMI output uh, sends audio through the cable. And I know on the EM10 Mark II it does not, so this, this uh, headphone jack is not really useful for EM10 Mark II owners. I'm not familiar with the EM10 Mark III, but I know my TG5 and my EM1 Mark II, they do send audio signals out. So if I did want to monitor uh, audio through the headphone jack, I can do that here. Now, one of the things it does not do is if you are plugged into AC power, uh, it will not charge the battery at the same time. So you have to charge your battery separately. Uh, not a big deal, but just I thought I'd mention that. Um, and this bracket that comes with it, when I first got it, opened the box, I, I, 
I thought I would hate this thing, but it turns out I actually really, really like it. So uh, I'll show you why when I uh, put it on the camera. So let's, um, let's move into that, uh, how I actually use this and why I'm taking this with me every time I go out. So as you know, the, the EM10 Mark II does not have the fully articulating screen. It just has the, uh, the flip screen. And I think for photography, you know, this is, this is actually my preferred method of shooting when I'm doing still photography. And, and this camera is my workhorse. You know, I use this in my professional work uh, for real estate photography. And then when I do all of my tutorials online, if you guys have been on my channel for a while, you know that this is the main camera that I use. This and my Pan F. But, um, you know, I never use this camera for video. I mean, really rare. Mainly because when I'm holding it like this, yeah, I can vlog like this, right? Just look front and center at the lens. But honestly, you know, I don't know if I'm in focus. I really don't know if the exposure is right. I just have to trust the camera. Uh, I don't know what my audio levels are. And really, the, the you know, and, and composition and things in the background. But really, the biggest problem I found was... I don't even know if the camera's recording or not. <laughs> I mean, I remember one time I was out, you know, jibber jabbering for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I went to stop the recording and I, I never even started. I accidentally hit the function two button instead of the record button on here. Uh, so, you know, having the screen at least articulate helps, and that's why a lot of vloggers, you know, they really look for that flip around screen. But there's a lot of cameras out there like this EM10 Mark II and the EM10 Mark III. They do great video, they just don't have this flip around screen, right? So that's where this uh, field monitor can really help you out without having to buy a whole nother camera. Um, and like I said, this is about 160 bucks. So let me show you how this is used on the camera, what it looks like, and then I'll talk about some of the features that'll help you with video. Uh, even if you have a fully articulating screen, uh, this is still a better option in most, in most cases. All right, so here I have it all set up on my EM10 Mark II using the L bracket. Uh, and as you can see, it, you know, it really doesn't add much uh, weight or bulk to the camera. This L bracket, the monitor with this uh, LE6 battery and the HDMI cable all combined is 330 grams. So it really doesn't add much weight to the, to the vlogging setup at all. And uh, now I can check my exposure. I can check my audio levels. I can look at the, the, the level meters themselves to make sure I'm holding it steady and uh, the composition. And more importantly, I can make sure I'm actually recording while I'm uh, holding the camera. So that in and of itself, I think is worth the purchase price alone. Uh, and the screen is very, very clear and crisp and, and just uh, a pleasure to look at. So. This really makes a huge difference if you want to vlog with your EM10 Mark II. Uh, let me show you a couple other things you can do because this bracket also has a little uh, cold shoe right here that you can attach some accessories. So I have here, I have here my uh, HN12 uh, microphone. So if you want to get better audio and record externally, that's all there is to it. And you know, this HN is very lightweight as well. So even with all this, this is still uh, very, very manageable. I think this total setup is uh, eight or 900 grams. I'll weigh it on the scale. It's, it's not much, but now you're full on legit, right? For vlogging. Uh, so another thing I like to add to the uh, hot shoe sometimes or cold shoe is just this little video light. So that when I'm out vlogging, when it's starting to get late at night, I can just put this little video light on here and now you can see me a little better. So, and, it, and, and being on this L bracket, now the light's a little bit off center so that uh, I get nice side lighting as well. I'll just record a little bit of this. So you see how the lighting is kind of a little bit off to the side? It's kind of nice. So that's, that's why actually I'm starting to really like this little L bracket, even though when I first opened the box, uh, I was not a fan. <laughs> All right, so I've set up a little scene here to demonstrate a couple of the features I think are helpful uh, that are built into the monitor. And before I even get into that right away, you can see how much more vivid and how much clearer, you know, this monitor looks compared to the monitor on the back of your camera. So that in of itself is almost worth the price of admissions, you know, that with it flipping around so you can see yourself. Um, but first thing I want to demonstrate is the, what they call false colors. And what this does is it tells you the exposure of every single pixel on the screen. 
And there's a little chart here on the right that in the center means it's properly exposed. So that'll be sort of this gray. And then it gets a green or darker gray and lighter grays. Everything kind of within that is, is going to be very well exposed. Um, and then as you start to get into yellows and this red, that's starting to clip to completely white. So red is basically complete, uh, clipped completely white. And as you get down here to the blues, which are colder, and then to this hot pink, that means you're clipped completely to black. So, for example, if I introduce some light here, you can see how quickly the base of the uh, butterfly here has been completely uh, clipped to white. But now the butterfly itself is, is pretty well exposed, right? Uh, most of it's gray or yellow. A tiny bit of blue around the tips, but it's not bad. And then I can do the opposite, take away some light, right, by putting my hand in front. And you can see that the black areas of the butterfly's wings are now sort of a dark blue. And then if I really cover the light, you can see all the edges of the butterfly's wings have uh, clipped completely to black um, in the image. So another feature I prefer personally over the uh, false colors is what they call the zebras, where it only identifies areas that are overexposed. And this is more useful for vlogging because you want to make sure your face is not overexposed. Because, uh, you know, it, your face would look awful if you have all these blown out highlights on your cheek, on your chin. You know, people with shiny skin, this is a problem. So I'll show you. When I introduce some light here, you can see these little red line or zebra lines uh, are telling me that the white parts of this image are overexposed. And what I'll have to do, if I want proper exposure, is I'll have to dial in some negative exposure comp, like so. And that's a little more interesting, right? Now I've crushed the uh, ambient light in the background and I'm just using the video light to illuminate the subject. So, um, but now I know for sure that I'm not, you know, clipping my highlights. All right, so I've recomposed the shot a little bit here to be front and center so that I can demonstrate the, uh, the digital zoom built into the monitor. And uh, if you're, this is handy if you're manually focusing for your vlogging or video work. I can punch in up to 16x and then manually focus until I feel like everything is sharpened and focused just like that. So I can see where this would be handy also for like a photography if you're doing macro work and you need to fine tune your focusing. I mean the camera has a built in uh, digital zoom as well or punch in focus but it's, it's much nicer on a large display like this. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you was the focus peaking feature, which you're probably already familiar with, but when you're recording in video, the focus peaking turns off when you're actually recording. So you can leave focus peaking on via the monitor uh, using the monitor's internal focus peaking feature. So I'll turn that on, and you can see all the letters and everything highlighted green. But if I wanted to make sure that the butterfly here was in focus, I can just manually rotate this ring and now I can see, and it may be hard to see online, but there's little speckles of green and everything right here in the center. Or if I wanted to focus on the butterfly's wing tips, I can see that now the wing tips are highlighted in green. So this is really handy, uh, particularly if you're vlogging and continuous autofocus. It's easier to see if like your eyes are still in focus because they'll be highlighted in green. And you can change the, the peaking color from green to red to blue, uh, whatever suits the scene best. So those are the most important features of the monitor that I think you know, you'll use as a beginning videographer or vlogger. Uh, there's a couple other things I recommend you get with this uh, monitor because the monitor comes with the, the bracket and an HDMI cable, but it doesn't come with batteries or a power supply. Now, you don't really need the power supply. All you need are some batteries. So I'm going to make a recommendation here. You know, these are the Canon LE6 batteries. I bought this charger, uh, and it came with three batteries for like 30 bucks or something. I can't remember exactly. But what I like about this charger in particular is, you know, it. and let me get up close so you can see. But it has its own USB. It works uh, by uh, USB, right? What I like most about this particular one is 
you can see the charging status of each battery so and it alternates between the two like right now it's charging battery number two is telling me it's at 7.3 volts and then underneath that it's showing me how many milliamps it's it's used so far to charge that battery and then battery channel number one is telling me that that battery is fully charged at 8.4 volts so I really like this because that'll tell me how depleted the battery was and then particularly when you buy these uh, these generic batteries you don't really know the true capacity so when you put in a completely dead battery and you see that it took you know 1600 milliamps to charge it you know that the capacity of this battery is 1600 milliamps versus I've seen uh, some batteries they only do up to 800 milliamps from almost completely dead so I know that those Chinese batteries do not charge uh, do not hold the same capacity as other batteries so I really like that feature on this uh, particular charger so this is the one I recommend and I'll put links down below for everything okay uh, one other thing you want to get is uh, a coiled HDMI card not a cord now some of them they sell with the little L uh, shape ends which are probably a little better but I just bought this cheap one coiled because the one that comes with the uh, uh, monitor is a little bit too long I think for vlogging this just makes everything nice and tidy on the camera as you saw before all right, so the last thing you need to get really is like a four pack of these little hot shoe adapters uh, with the double screw. Because, uh, you know, you get four because you always lose one. And then you attach one permanently to your microphone, another one to a video light. And then I use this in place of the sort of half hot shoe adapter that came with the uh, monitor itself. Because I didn't care for the hot shoe adapter that came with the monitor. This is a lot more flexible to use. I do use the one that came with the monitor and I attached a little Arca Swiss plate to it. And I'll show you in another video how I use this. It's really actually very handy to attach an Arca Swiss plate to the half hot shoe adapter. Uh, I think you're going to find that pretty neat in my next video. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this video and hopefully I showed you a few applications to help you make a decision whether or not you want to add something like this to your bag. I mean, for me personally, I take it with me everywhere. I find it uh, really helpful to have that larger clear screen attached to the camera you know when I'm doing my video work or my vlogging I mean I've been using a, a video monitor for a long time now my Blackmagic Video Assist but I never take it in the field with me I only use it when I'm at home or in my backyard because it's kind of big and heavy and bulky but this one is really small and lightweight uh, and it's really changed my mind about using field monitors uh, out in the field like they're supposed to be particularly with our Olympus cameras which are very small so uh, as always, you know, I really appreciate you guys uh, watching and if you have any questions or feedback, just leave them down in the comments below and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon.